Spurs, it's only the second. Starting on it's an opening tap right after this. The NBA on CBS. Today's playoff game is sponsored by the Miller Brewing Company. Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. And by Canon, manufacturer of advanced plain paper copiers. Let's take a look now at the starting lineups for this afternoon's NBA Western Conference final game. Forward positions, Mike Mitchell of the Spurs and Jamal Wilkes of the Los Angeles Lakers. The other forward, Mark Oberding and Kurt Rambis. Two guys who can really muscle. At the center, George Johnson of the Spurs who leads the league in block shots and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In the backcourt, Johnny Moore who led the NBA in assists this year, and Norm Nixon, who's off to a great playoff start this year. And at the other guard, George Gervin and Irvin Magic Johnson, two guys who used to hoop it up a little bit in Detroit on the playgrounds where both grew up. Ready now for the opening tip-off as you see the regular season statistics head-to-head, -head, and I think it pretty well points out what Hubie mentioned. On paper, at least, this is a very close matchup. Whether it turns that up my way remains to be seen. You think the 76ers really showed up today, uh, Hubie? Well, I tell you, you can't, you can't say that it's a fatigue factor. Uh, it was just an absolute perfect game, a game plan and also perfect execution. Here's this afternoon's officials. Paul Mahalik and Wally Rooney will be working the game, and Hugh Hollins is the alternate. Lakers controlling. Magic Johnson trying to get it inside to Kareem, and Kareem crashing into Overton. Well, any time that a person throws a lot pass to another individual, the defensive team must allow the man to land on the floor. Overding undercut Kareem, not deliberately, totally by accident. First foul of the game on Overding. Here's Kareem out of the middle. First basket of the game, and he's the guy who's given the Spurs the problems of the past. Our, our fans should watch San Antonio double-teaming Kareem every time he puts the ball on the floor. Oberding to Mitchell in the lane. 14-footer off the glass for Mike Mitchell. Well, Mike Mitchell has had an outstanding five-game series. He averaged 32.5 versus uh, L.A., and they are deeply concerned with he and Dave Corzine. Stan Albeck says, without Mitchell, we would not be here today. Foul called in the lane. Away from the ball. Well, you know, an awful lot of people looked at that trade, and uh, San Antonio, you know, gave up Brewer, the, the outstanding guard, and, and also uh, Johnson, who was a starting small forward for him, came out of it with Mitchell, and are extremely happy. The last foul was on Johnny Moore. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar call for traveling. Green made a strong move that time. The only problem was is that it looked like a little bump kind of gave him that extra shuffling of the feet. Johnny Moore. To Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. 31. And as Mitchell got the ball, he also got a little nudge from Kurt Rambis. Mike Mitchell has been able to hurt the Lakers posting up on either side in the low box area. He's an outstanding shooter with his back to the basket. Oberding. Mark missed 11 games for San Antonio during the year with a very, very badly sprained ankle, but once he's back in the lineup, he'll murder. Nixon missing from outside, the ball knocked out of bounds by Jabbar. So it belongs to San Antonio. Interesting story statistically is George Johnson. He leads the league in, in block shots. He has more block shots per game than he averages points as Moore goes in. Rebound shot is good. Mitchell coming up with his second hoop. Well, that, that was that was made possible because Kurt Rambis is playing on the top side of Mitchell. So every time we see an offensive rebound come off, we, we will see. Here comes the shot here right now. They get more Good, in the foul. strong move by Nixon, but it picked up that Ricky Tick foul in the backcourt. Uh, Johnny Moore has two fouls in the early going for the San Antonio Spurs. Kareem making a move on Johnson. Basket counts, and he gets the foul. I tell you, that was an amazing move by the big fella because watch George Johnson now grab onto Kareem's right arm as he's going for the shot. He catches him right there. And Kareem was strong enough still to be able to take him to the basket for the fingertip roll. Now that is the fourth team foul on San Antonio in the first minute and a half of this game. 
Well, the Lakers are not what we would refer to as a good foul shooting team. They are right at the bottom of the league in total foul shooting percentage. Gervin rejected that time, and Rambis came up with it. Now to Nixon. Jamal Wilkes with the slingshot jumper, which was so effective against Phoenix. He averaged 24 points a game in that series. All knocked out of bounds by the Lakers, and it belongs to the San Antonio Spurs. Well, Jamal only shoots 47% against San Antonio, and his average is down. He only averages 19 a game. Oh, he's oh, oh, oh. Collins, is that any good? Well, <laughs> is that any good? But they come back so fast. Wilkes answering on the other end. See, the thing our fans should be watching here is, is that Wilkes is guarding Gervin in the backcourt, but Oberdick is guarding Wilkes, so, I mean, Jamal Wilkes. So consequently, he's going to be... He's going to get caught on, on the defensive end of the floor an awful lot of times not being able to recover. Oberding hitting, and the Spurs off to an early four-point lead at 10-6. Saved by Jabbar. Magic Johnson just inside the three-point line. Nixon. He's 0 for 2. Magic saves the rebound. And a loose ball foul. It's against Rambis of the Lakers, his second, team second. Two of the most consistent field goal percentage shooters for Los Angeles are Wilkes and Norm Nixon. But in the series versus San Antonio, both of them are far below their average percentage-wise. Spurs leading 10-6. to Gervin driving on Wilkes. And Wilkes picks up the foul. Now, they're going to try several people on Gervin. Uh, well, here we have the clear out right now. And they're giving... Uh, Iceman, the baseline to go on, on Jamal. Jamal using the forearm. Later in the game, he'll probably get away with that. But right now, early, they're trying to, the referees are trying to establish a tempo here. Nixon comes up with the rebound. Slows it down, waits for help. Come down court. Magic has posted up Gervin. Nixon. He's 0 for 3 in the early going. Rambis saves it. Wilkes on the drive. Hook shot by Silk. That doesn't go. And the next one comes down to George Johnson. Johnny Moore trying to put a move on Nixon. Off to Mitchell. Now is on Jabbar. Yep. Watch this move here right now. And Kareem is going all out for that block. And I find that interesting that he could not get a piece of the ball. Before the ball game and talking to Coach Pat Riley, uh, Pat was concerned because they honestly feel that they have no one who can intimidate Mike Mitchell's shot. And in the five-game series, that's proven by his 32 points a game versus uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Pat Riley looking on, disciple of uh, Adolph Rupp at Kentucky when he was a college student, player. Mitchell hits them both from the free throw line, and the Spurs lead it by six. Well, there they are in a 2-2-1. Two -two San Antonio gave us a 2-2-1 two -two three-quarter court zone press, but Los Angeles Lakers feel that they can break the press because it is not a good trapping defense. They feel they can score. That time they did. Missed the slam. He was alone underneath. And the Iceman misses the slam dunk. It may We're give the gonna, Lakers a little psychological. You're not going to see that very often, though. No. That may be a once-a-season occurrence. Inside to Kareem, who has it knocked out of his hands. Rambis saves it. Magic Johnson passing off to Wilkes. Shot clock to five. Oh, oh. Rambis tips it in. Uh, that, that was knocked in by Rambis and George Johnson. The Lakers get a big break on that one. It's interesting that the Lakers have been on the offensive board so easily. But our fans should be looking. Both teams are excellent offensive rebounding ball players. And Gervin misses again. He hasn't done the damage, but the Spurs are out in front. Mitchell. Oh, what a Johnny Moore got a great rebound. One of the smallest men on the floor. Couldn't get it back up. Gervin has the next one blocked. Moore gets it, and he finally puts it through. So you have to like the effort by Moore. The young man is more noted as the number one assist man in the NBA, averaging uh, about 9.6 assists per ball game. He's not referred to as an offensive rebounder. Jabbar with the fadeaway jumper doesn't go for the rebound. Batted up there and he is fouled. Well, they say the basket counts. Well, I tell you, I've, uh, Stan Alvin can't Alvin. believe it. Uh, he has a 
right to be a little excited on that one. Uh, here we have the move by Kareem. It's a very, very strong move. Here he comes back in. Now watch the rebound right to Kareem, and there it is right there. That ball was definitely hit on the way up. It was not taken on the way down. Timeout with 6 minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the opening period. The Spurs lead the Lakers 14-12. to 12. And more exciting NBA playoff action uh, coming up Friday night with this series in San Antonio. At that point, it'll be game three. They play game two here on Tuesday night. San Antonio with the ball, a two-point lead, and Gerben rides in for an easy layup. That time we saw the L.A. half-court trap. It's a 1-3-1 alignment, and they're looking to get two traps. Now, the first one was made perfectly, but then the thing which is the... The deciding factor, if you're going to score or not, is you must get the ball to the middle. And they got it to Gervin. It looks like he's going to be there all night versus the trap. Magic posted up with Gervin, gets it off to Nixon. Little double by Norm Nixon, his first basket of the game. Well, they need Norm to have a good series because I think this is a great matchup. Norm Nixon versus Johnny Moore. Both guys are, are water bugs. Gervin missing the jumper. Wilkes with the rebound, threw it down court to Rambis, who didn't see it. Magic picked it up quickly to Nixon. Rambis was looking the other direction. Stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Stepped on the out-of-bounds line. You know, for all the people who are saying, you know, George Gervin is off to a bad start right now, he's a little cold, I'm going to throw a stat at you. Gervin shot 50% for the year, but in the five games versus L.A., he only shot 37%. Why? I know, I know. Well, you can see they're up at challenging him on every shot, and they're not letting him get to the areas that he is the most successful at. For traveling, he may be a little rattled here in the early going. Well, a guy like Gervin doesn't get rattled. Uh, one thing that you'll see interesting about George that see they're double teaming him down on the baseline. They're giving him a lot of trouble now. When that happens, he, he's got to find a free man, or he's going to be forcing shots. But Gervin is one of the very few people in this league who I have seen in all my years who every time he releases the shot, it still looks like it's going in. George Johnson fouling Jabbar. Michael Cooper is into the game. He's the first substitute on either side. San Antonio does. Doesn't substitute much. In fact, the last game against uh, Seattle, they only played eight players. Here's Michael Cooper. What a prize he has turned into for being a third-round draft choice several uh, years ago. He makes such a heavy contribution. In the Phoenix series, he averaged 10.5 a game, shot 56%. But more important, matched up perfectly versus Walter Davis. And the L.A. coaching staff felt that that was the main reason for Walter Davis only shooting 36%. Now we mentioned San Antonio, as you look at Dave Corzine looking on, we mentioned San Antonio getting into foul trouble early. The Lakers are already benefiting from the penalty. We've got five and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. Score tied at 16. Now that time in that half-court trap, that's the second time that they've scored versus the half-court trap. Now you can see why they're worried about Mitchell. Mitchell shot it even when he was trapped. Michael Cooper getting the coop call from above as he hits his first basket of the game. Lakers have not been in front but once, and that was by two points. So see, we should look at some of these matchups. Coach Pat Riley does not have Magic Johnson playing Gervin, even though they are at the same position. He has Magic Johnson guarding Overding, size factor, and tough rebounders. Also, uh, in regards to that, they have moved Silk Wilkes from the small forward position to guard George Gervin in the backcourt. Now, this is a lot of strategy being involved here right now. And it's also at the other end where Stan Albeck feels that Mark Oberding, even though he's big and powerful, he can run and chase Jamal Wilkes, whereas Mike Mitchell, who should be playing Wilkes, is over on Kirk Rambis. Now here we have San Antonio zone press right here now. It, it's not a trapping press. It's nothing more to try to slow you up. Right now, the Lakers are two for two. They're not doing a good job in stopping the penetration. Mitchell comes back for San Antonio. That's his fourth basket. Already in the double figures with 10 points. And we get a trembling call against Cooper. And the Lakers turn it over. Spurs leading 21 to 20 as Johnny Moore brings it down. Former University of Texas guard. Signed as a free agent. 
as he drives the lane. He's fouled by Nixon, and that's two. Well, Don Nixon has his hands full with this young man right here. Not only is he a great playmaker, which is quite obvious because he leads the league in assists, but he is an extremely explosive dribbler to his right. And he'll he'll kind of sucker you into a laissez-faire move, and all of a sudden he bursts like he just did that time. He has a great stride, and his penetration to the basket is dynamite because the defensive player knows that he'll also make the pass in traffic. The yeah, Spurs had him once and let him go, and he went back to Texas for a year as an assistant coach, and they re-signed him as a free agent. And, of course, he now leads the NBA in assists. A tremendous bargain. Jabbar! Tried to get the left-handed sky hook away and it deflected. Well, Mike Mitchell got a piece of that when Green went for the run. Cole with a great move and all of And what a pass to Liberty. Wasn't that beautiful? He did a 360 on that and still had the presence of mind to realize that he had a trailer right there. Beautiful. Johnny Moore, the pride of Altoona, Pennsylvania. Inside to Jabbar. Sky hook. Two. 12 points. For the big guy, 24-22. We've still got 340 left in the opening period. Moore guarded closely by Nixon. For the Iceman. Drops it off this time. Johnson looking for help. Moore from outside. The shot clock winds down. Lakers ball out of bounds. Here's Dave Corzine. Coming in, he has done a great job against Jabbar in the past. Take a look at that sequence involving Moore. All right, here we cut Moore. Really strong move off the basket. There's the beginning of his 360 move right there. Nice reverse dribble as he goes up in the air. Watch this. He sees the trailer. That's what you talk about. Great peripheral vision. He didn't have to turn his head to see the man coming down from the top of the circle. Shot clock inside of 10. McAdoo. Yes. I'd say Robert coming off the bench is just playing outstanding basketball. In the Phoenix series, 14 points a game, nine rebounds. Now we had a chance to come out to Los Angeles during the week and visit with him. Very articulate young man. And he wants that championship ring, no question about it. Kerbin with the baby hook shot. 26-24, Spurs hanging in there, but the Lakers matching them basket for basket. Well, down at the offensive end of the floor here, we should be watching George Gervin coming off the stack on either the right or the left side. And every so often, watch for the lob pass like they did the previous time down the floor because L.A. is playing him on the top side. Nixon with that last basket for Los Angeles. Timeout Spurs with the score tied at 26. Frank Labor with UB Brown back at the Forum in Los Angeles. Lakers have started to heat up after a slow start. They have made nine of their last 12 field goal attempts, shooting 57%. The San Antonio's 51%. Stan Albeck, former assistant coach, spent three years under Jerry West, disappointed when he didn't get the head job here when West uh, retired and would like to come back. He feels he knows this Laker team as well as anybody. In the two years he's been at San Antonio, he has beaten the Lakers in the series both years, three games to two. And he thinks he knows uh, how to play uh, Wilkes and, and Jabbar, the rest of them defensively. Well, Stan, Stan's a good man. Stan was my assistant for two years at Kentucky when we won the ABA championship. And then when the uh, two leagues merged, uh, we were both out of a job. He landed here with the Lakers at that time. He did an excellent job. Gervin with the turnaround jumper over Cooper. Jabbar, great outlet pass to Cooper. That was just an outstanding athletic move because Johnny Moore cut him off and when he elevated, he had to shift, shift gears in air to avoid a collision. Pretty good hang tag, would you say? Yes, I, I think so. <laughs> I did. That was a beautiful pass. A lot of banging going on underneath the basket. We're going to foul underneath. All right, here we have. Here's a shot. Gervin is going to round the rim. But watch Kareem pick out the release, man. There's Cooper going. Now, here it is right now. There it is. He shifts, and he makes a beautiful, beautiful move. You talk about hang time and glide time in covering a distance. A lot of people don't realize that Cooper is 6'6". Six six. There's no foul on the last possession, a three-second violation instead. Now, right down here at this one. end, they just ran a double screen on the baseline for Jamal Wilkes. As he came over the top of the screen, 
San Antonio switched out. Jamal had no place to go, and he pushed off with both hands. Offensive foul. Second foul on Wilkes. A minute 40 left in the opening period. This is Gene Banks, who has just come into the game during the timeout. Moore off to Banks, the former Duke star, gets his first basket. Pretty good arch on that one. I thought it'd bring rain. Well, in the last 25% of the season and in the playoffs, uh, the San Antonio coaches have extremely happy with Gene Banks scoring. Jamal Wilkes, his second basket of the game, so he's off to a slow start. Offensively, Brewer getting ready to come in for the Lakers. 30 to 28. Los Angeles leading by two. Gervin. Blocked by Jabbar, and we get a foul apparently called on Cooper. No, it's, it, is it on Cooper or on Jabbar? Let's he see. has. Uh, it's going to be interesting who he calls it on because right there, Magic Johnson thinks the foul is on him. Uh, <laughs> it turned three, out they called it on Cooper. Yes, that's right. Uh, now, I, I know we're not to believe that he got wolfed off that ball. <laughs> they wouldn't do a thing like that. But. <laughs> that was a great block by Kareem. Uh, you got a pair, relax. Strong move into the area there. Triple team. Wally Rooney, you heard him say, you got a pair, relax. Two for Gervin. He's an 86% free throw shooter. That's his best career. Free throw shooting percentage puts him in the top five in the NBA. George has always been a 50% plus field goal shooter and consistently shoots over 84% on the line. That's the time remaining in the first period. There's that double screen again on the baseline for McAdoo. McAdoo! Oh! Oh! Perhaps a little bit outside of his range that time, but Magic Johnson saves it. And the Lakers start the offense all over again. 18 seconds on the shot clock and 40 seconds on the quarter clock. Oh! Wilson the drive. Magic Johnson missed an easy follow. Well, I tell you, they feel right now, the Los Angeles Lakers feel that Jamal Wilkes can take Gene Banks off the dribble anytime. So I think that we're going to see a number of clear outs uh, in the early part of the second quarter. It's interesting, the foul is on Banks. The way this series has gone, we told you the Lakers trailed 2 3 on the year. First time around, San Antonio beat the Lakers by 26 in San Antonio without Gervin. If you can believe that. And the next couple of times, as Rambis looks on, it was the Lakers in a blowout. In the last couple of games, they played him fairly close. So Magic Johnson hitting from the free throw line. And it's a three-point advantage, and that is the Lakers' biggest lead of the game. 25 seconds left in the first quarter. Irvin hooking the pass in the corner to Mitchell. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I'll tell you what, Stan Olbeck is yelling zone, zone, zone. He shouldn't say a word. They're, they're three for three against the zone. They should leave him stay in the zone. <laughs> and Raleigh was saying before the game he thought San Antonio's playing the zone against Seattle. <laughs> Air ball put up by Wilkes with just three seconds left in the quarter, and that's it. First quarter is over at the Forum in Inglewood, California. Outstanding first quarter with the Lakers leading the Spurs by one. And needless to say, this time of year, this is where it gets exciting. Boy, you find all kinds of people out here in Los Angeles, don't you? But, but everyone is a happy person. I'd like to wish you, I'd like to wish whoever that was a happy Mother's Day, if indeed she is a mother. Well, we just want to say to everyone out there... And, uh, Where's your mother? Your mother still alive? No, my mother, no. my mother passed away on Christmas Eve. Well, my mother is living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to her. Well, let's get all the wives in there also. The wives as well. I wish everyone a happy day. All right. This ball game is every bit what we thought it would be. The scoring is exactly where we thought it would be, 32 to 31. We've seen some outstanding defensive plays, and also we've seen a lot of people yelling about zones. <laughs> Missing the shot, but Banks really soaring to get the tip in. Gene Banks of the Spurs put San Antonio out in front by one, 33-32. McAdoo over Overding. And Banks comes out with the rebound. Banks was a second-round draft choice. A lot of people wondered how he lasted that long. He had an outstanding career at Duke. He was a freshman. His team went to the final four. 
Oberding is tough Oberding. because he is, he is a, a player at his size who can post up and also hit that 15 to 18 foot jump shot. He's not a stereotype. Uh, he's dangerous wherever he catches the ball. Wilkes doing a good job getting the pass back. Brewer has come into the game during the timeout. Jim Brewer Seven seconds on the shot clock. Jamal Wilkes. 16th score in the league this year. Average of over 21 points per game. And a lot of them came on the patented slingshot jumper like that one. Right now, San Antonio has Brad Scorzine and Banks. Banks in this game now. These three guys were the big surprise in that Seattle series. How much of a heavy contribution they made. Foul uh, is on Brewer. That's his first foul. Of course, the first team foul of the second period of play. Well, what I liked was uh, right away, Stan Allback sent a, a post-up situation on Jamal Wilkes with Gene Banks. Gervin missing the hook shot. Banks has his shot blocked. It'll belong to San Antonio. That was Jamal Wilkes' second block of this game. Is there, there we have two fellas who make a heavy contribution. I a big believe, fella. I believe they can magic. play. <laughs> Gervin won't go for it. Posen has it batted back. Nice block by Brewer. Down to Wilkes. Won't go for it. Jamal on the other end. Corzine with the outlet. Down to Oberdig. Shooting over Brewer. Didn't get the rim. Just the backboard. And Banks with the rebound. Well, Banks has made his presence felt immediately. Two offensive rebound baskets. You know, you, you got to watch out for this group. Uh, they look at them, you say, hey, individually, we can take them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they're not a real quick group of people, but you know what they do? They execute extremely well together as a unit, and that's the key. Foul was called on Mark Oberding, his second of the game. Timeout is called by the San Antonio Spurs, who lead the Lakers 37-34. And the Colonial NIT, one of the more prestigious stops of the year. Most of the pros show up for that one because it's on one of the great golf courses that the pros play on each year. Fort Worth, Texas, welcoming the PGA pros this weekend. And you'll see it on CBS. Stan Albeck, what they used to call him, Stanley Screamer. Huh? Did, you, Stanley, did you put that on him? Oh, or Stanley <laughs> Steamer. Stan <laughs> Screamer. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> McAdoo from outside for the Lakers, and Corzine grabs it. Uh, McAdoo's been short three times in a row now. Bratz has come into the game for San Antonio. Good steal. Michael Cooper coming up with it. Spurs leading by three. McAdoo. He's got the feeling. At that time, Big Mac had a little bit more time to get the shot off. The other three, which he was short on, it seemed like he was rushing it a little bit. One point game now. Banks, by the way, four rebounds in five minutes. He was in the ball game. In fact, he's still in there. Corzine shooting over Mahidu, trying to get it back, and Cooper soars for the rebound. Nixon. Yes. Well, Lakers take the lead, 38-37. At the defensive end of the floor, we had McAdoo do an excellent chest-up defensive job on Corzine. It made him shoot over the top of him. And at this end, it's nice to see Nixon running a little streak here right now. Lakers have got Cooper on Gervin right now. Corzine hits from 15. Corzine is deadly from 15 to 17 feet facing the basket. It's not bad for a man at 6 foot 11, 270. That's a nice touch. I think 270 is generous. I mean, <laughs> what, when do you think he weighed 270? Was it in high school or what? In some Oberding going in for the shot, and he's shoved by McAdoo. That's a strong move by Mark. You know, bad foul by McAdoo due to the fact that it was not what you would call a high percentage shot. It was more like a throw rather than a, a shot that time by Mark. Check of the stats on George Gervin. He is 3 out of 11, so he's off to a slow start here in the second period. Mark Oberding had his best year in the NBA scoring-wise. Average 13.8 a game. He is an 81% foul shooter over the season. Former University of Minnesota star, though he wasn't uh, there long, went to San Diego, as he declared early. Johnny Moore, you saw, getting ready to come back in for the Spurs. McAdoo almost locked control. Inside, Cooper, left-handed hook. Brewer tips it up once. Jim Brewer gets it again. McAdoo. 
was beautiful how Brewer stayed in traffic that time and kept that one alive. That is the Lakers' third second shot field goal out of eight opportunities, which is really high versus a good rebounding team like the San Antonio Spurs. George Gervin trying to get it going in the corner, Corsi. At this time, Brewer with the rebound. Outlet, McAdoo. Pull up jumper. Oh, he's got the field now. He's got the field. McAdoo has 10 points. Stan Albeck told us before the game, McAdoo was one guy who could make a big difference. And the fast break points have gone to Los Angeles. The Lakers outscoring the Spurs on the fast break 12 to nothing. And these fans are on their feet. Well, as the Lakers take the lead by two. Stan's all upset because at the other end of the floor, the guy who made the fast break possible was Michael Cooper as he came across and tapped the ball out of, out of the guy's hand on that shot attempt. Stan wanted a foul, not by Cooper, but by the man who was guarding him. That's what caused the technical foul because he wouldn't let up on it. He wanted to prove a point here that he does not want to have all of this intimidation. Here's the Laker half-court trap now. They're looking for the double team. Now they're going back into the matchup. Technical foul on all back a moment ago. Fadeaway jumper. Banks is short. Banks is grabbing board on the floor along with Magic Johnson and Norm Nixon, and they'll jump it up. Specifically, when you say half-court trap, what do you mean? What happens is, is that the Lakers are not playing a man-to-man. -man. They are set up in a 1-3-1 one, one defensive de uh, deployment of people. The three men are across the top of the circle covering areas of the floor. That's a zone, right? That's illegal. No, it's not illegal as long as no one is in the three-second area and that they are going for the trap. And they are getting that first trap right at that half-court area, but San Antonio's done an excellent job in finding the free people. McAdoo failed to hit that time. Corzine with the rebound, dishing it off to Mike Bratz. And Bratz with the pull-up jumper, foul from behind by Magic Johnson. And again, you talk about not a good foul. That wasn't a good foul. No, it wasn't a good foul, but, you know, Mike Bratz is a streak type of a player. Now, for, for the uh, season, Mike only shot 40%, and he shot 38% during the year versus the Lakers, but he's one of these type of people that can make the three-point shot. In the Seattle series, he was three for four. He only took one shot in the one ball game and won it right at the end when they needed the two-point field goal. Uh, and the young man does not turn the ball over. Out of Stanford University, uh, excellent, excellent ball handler. You notice how many of these guys have a Cleveland background? <laughs> I mean, Mitchell and Bratz. Liberty going in, really going in strong. That was a strong move that time. McAdoo realized that Overding was going for the dunk, and he fouled him. He fouled him hard so he would not make that shot. Watch this rotation. Here it is right here. Good, strong foul by McAdoo. We're going to put Overding on the line and make him make the foul shots versus the possible dunk. Now, what I like about this group so far on the floor for San Antonio is that this is their fourth second shot scoring opportunity and we've only played five minutes in the second quarter. They're really banging hard. Lakers lead by three. Overding, of course, one of the original Brews brothers. He's a real alley fighter, isn't he? Oh, yes, he is. And he's been that way ever since he came into the pros in the ABA as a 19-year-old player. Spent just his freshman year at Minnesota before he came out with hardship. Jabal, left hand doesn't work. Corzine, outlet pass. Down court to Johnny Moore. Moore one, 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 one on Michael indeed. Cooper. See, that, that was just a great move, a great head fake by uh, by Moore. But you know, one thing you know about Moore, he's going to a head fake, but he's always going to come back right. Lakers come right back with Jabbar scoring his 14th point of the game. Well, see, the Lakers are doing something. Every field goal that is made, Kareem is not taking the ball out of bounds. Kareem is running the lane, a la Parrish with Boston, and the big forward is taking the ball out of bounds. Jabbar tips it right into the hands of Bratz. Bratz missing, and Jabbar sends it this time to Nixon. Three on two, Laker break. Nixon doesn't go, and here comes the San Antonio break. Moore will slow it down. Wait for the reinforcements to arrive on the scene. Mitchell! Mitchell! 
Oh, they want to post up Mitchell. I think they heard that one over in Europe. <laughs> Stand is going nuts. See, he's got, he's got Kareem in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Stan is going crazy to get it over to him and clear him out. Marzine posted up on Michael Cooper. That's a mismatch height-wise, certainly. Overding. And Jabai with another board. Outlet pass to Cooper. Nixon. And he'll hold out to McAdoo. McAdoo wants to name. That's a travel. Good call by the referee. Strong call. Walking. He caught him on a little McAdoo. skip. Caught him on a little skip before he made a strong move to the basket without the dribble. That looks like the Spurs are going to try to run a little bit with L.A. Well, uh, let's face it. If any team in this league can. Jerry West and son. Happy Mother's Day. And it doesn't get more exciting or more close than this one here at Los Angeles today. The Lakers and the Spurs, Los Angeles by two at this point. As you look at the field goal percentage in the second quarter, Los Angeles has really come on strong. We've got five and a half minutes remaining in the first half of play as Mike Brotz brings it down. All right, here's the F-court trap again. They went for the steal and gamble, but this is where they've been outstanding. There it is right there. That's their fourth score in five opportunities against that half-court trap. And the difference was in the Phoenix series, Phoenix could not penetrate and get the score where the Lakers were able to turn it over and get out on their fast break. Mike so, Mitchell now with 14 points in the game. He's doing the scoring. Gervin has had a tough time so far. Here's your double team of the big fella. Cooper. One thing you know is for sure, when Green gets double and triple team, he's going to find a free man. You must move and get yourself in a position whereby you get the shot that you want to take. Rotz going to Oberdig, trying to put a move on Bob McAdoo. Well, they're doing uh, posting up right there. Mike Mitchell on Cooper. Shot this time short by Mitchell. Great pass. And Cooper couldn't get the layup. That would have been another spectacular effort. Well, I tell you, that time he disturbed him, no doubt about it. Johnny Moore, one pass, too many. And the Lakers come up with a two on one. Nixon trying to go behind the back to McAdoo. Hey, that was great defense by Overton. Brotz, three pointer. Mike Brotz. I'm telling you, the young man is amazing from that three point area. He can make, he can miss four or five two point opportunities, all of a sudden run a streak of threes. He was ninth in the league. He had 33% of his three point tries during the season. I'll tell you, right there, Kareem was trying to make a move to the middle of the lane on the dotted line. He wanted that pass right in front of the basket. But what happened was on that move, uh, Corzine catches him with a, 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 an excellent uh, four on to the head. Corzine has Kareem hits on the hook shot. Well, see, right there, you know, it's a good move when you're a coach. A guy picks up a cheap foul like Corzine did, go right back to the same man. The Lakers went right back into Kareem and see if you can get another one on him or will he let his man go easily to the basket. That time he, he contested, but he picked up the second foul, you know, on three seconds. Jabbar, 7 out of 10 from the field, and Kareem now has 17 points in the first half. 50 to 48. All right, here's the uh, double and single screen on the baseline for Gervin. And if it is not there, they're looking to pick up uh, Mike Mitchell in the post up. Well, Mike Mitchell is off to such a good start in this ball game that the Lakers are definitely very, very concerned. Cooper is no match for him if Cooper is going to stay behind him because there's too much of a strength factor involved along with the size factor. Rambis is third personal foul, and that's the 15th foul of Los Angeles, so a penalty applies the rest of the way here. It's Mitchell on the free throw line. Well, Mitchell is not a good field goal, I mean a foul shooter. During the course of the year, he only shot 73%. Two out of four from the line. Still has 16 points. Nixon. You know why that was beautiful? Because Corzine was so so concerned about Kareem getting a dunk on a dish off that time. He had to stay, and Nixon took it up with his left hand. Beautiful move. This is the Lakers' biggest lead thus far. Four points. Gervin. Off balance. Nixon down to Wilkes. Moore fouled him. 
Good foul by Johnny Moore that time. Excellent foul. Here we have nice pass by Nixon and Trent. Watch, watch Jamal sucker the defense in here. There it is. Little hesitation. Jamal, one of the best front court players in this league on the break because he's such an intelligent player. He has the ability to get the defensive man to commit before he makes his power move at the end of the shot. Wilkes, first trip to the free throw line this afternoon. San Antonio has really had their problems uh, from the line. The Spurs are two out of eight from the free throw line in the second quarter. And thus far, Los Angeles bench has outscored San Antonio 16 to 9. You're talking about the bench matchup. So it's gone scoring wise so far. That's Jamal Wilkes' fourth scoring opportunity off the fast break. We cannot emphasize enough the fact that he's playing Gervin in the backcourt. And then his man is underneath the basket, so he's going to be open a lot out in the open oh, floor. Mike Bratz trying to drive. Mike has been around the league some. Again, having trouble going inside. Well, you get another block that time. The double and triple team in charge. Wilkes on the other end. And these Laker fans are loving it. 55-48. And Stan Albeck says, let's call timeout. And Albeck is hot at the officials because Gervin can't oh, seem to get a double ball. team right there. Nice block by Kurt Rambis. Here comes your pitch. I watch Magic. He's putting it down until he sees the daylight. That's a great advantage of a point guard that can push it. And here we have all Silk at the other end for his fifth score in the open floor. Lakers 55, Spurs 48. Back at the Forum in Los Angeles in just a moment. A lot of people in the business these days say Alex Arguello is the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. You'll see him on CBS in two weeks defending his lightweight championship. Halftime. Highlights of the 76er Celtics, Randy Holloway, the Minnesota Vikings, and our rebound feature on Cliff Hagen. Another one of your old ABA guys. Yeah. They're scattered around the country in a few spots. <laughs> you find them every once in a while. <laughs> Maybe Gervin's an ABA guy. Look at that. You know, once upon a time, Barzine with the shot. Gervin and Julius Irving played on the same team, did they not, in That's the ABA? absolutely right. The Virginia Squires. Was that a dynamite team? Could they put Marcus on the board? I would Al so. Yankee, who was the coach of the Squires at that time. Norm Nixon. Doing a little penetrating, shooting over Corzine, who intimidated him a bit. Wilkes with the rebound. You have to watch out for Jamal Wilkes. He's a sneaky offensive rebounder. He has already garnered three second shot opportunities in this ballgame. Los Angeles has outscored San Antonio in fast break opportunity, 17-2. I tell you, Randall is really working on Mike Mitchell. Barzine missing from 15 feet. Looked like Stan Albeck wanted to go out and pick it up. No, I tell you, Stan's referee and Stan does not want to get on the fast break because he's getting extra pay hey, today for refereeing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Stan is working hard. He's, he's doing some job here. He's done an excellent job with the San Antonio Spurs. I think Stan's working pretty hard, too, as a matter of fact. Gervin inside to Oberding, back to the Iceman. Good penetration. Oberding can't hit the shot. Spurs have cooled off. Well, they caught Kareem across the head that time, knocking the uh, goggles down off, off the eye area. Uh, this is a big point right now with George Gervin. Every time that Gervin is putting the ball on the floor and making his penetration, he is being double and triple team. I find it interesting so far that he has not been able to find the free people. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, it's the job of the guy, but it is also the job of the offense that the people who are wide open can move into scoring areas. And sometimes it's not possible. And, and I find it when Gervin breaks the dotted line area and is six to eight feet away that he absolutely has no one to pass the ball to. 19 points for Jabbar. That is his highest scoring half in the playoffs so far. And this is the Lakers' biggest lead. Rots on the drive. Rambis is fighting Mitchell from the top side. Take a look at these. I just watch how hard Rambis is working here right now. He's staying between Mike Mitchell and the ball. Now I want to tell you something. This takes an awful lot out of you from a physical standpoint. 
because when that shot goes up, your player that you're guarding has inside position for that offensive rebound. So not only are you working hard defensively, now you've got to turn around and beat him to the offensive rebound, which is a defensive rebound for you. Rambis sitting down with four fouls here in the first half. Mitchell on the free throw line. 15 points for Mitchell in the first half of play. He hit 41 earlier this year in a game against Los Angeles. Of course, with the trade and all, he got to play 84 games this year. Compared to 82 for most everybody in the league with the overlap between uh, Cleveland and San Antonio schedule. Jabbar over Corzine. Bratz grabs the rebound. Corzine missed the layup, and here comes Magic. Leading the Laker break. There it is. Yes. Trying to dish it off to Wilkes. Hey, let me tell you something. That was the second time Mark Oberding has made a sensational defensive play. Getting his hand on the ball, whereby the Lakers have had a two-on-one in inside that lane on him. Two beautiful defensive plays. That's a very underrated basketball player, Mark Oberding. 22nd injury time, I believe, here, and we'll give us a chance. All right, here to look we have action. Mark Bratz coming down here right now. Here's the pass to Corzine, and he had it. But the little bit of intimidation that time, the herky-jerky defense. Now watch Magic pushing hard here. Now he has the left lane right there as he goes by. Now watch this two-on-one, but watch the hand area there. They get it from both places. Overton gets a piece, but also trailing the play that time, we have Gervin get also getting a piece from the rear. 52 seconds left to play in the half. All right, here we have Kevin McKenna, who is out with a, a strain of the Achilles area. A uh, good young-looking rookie who, who might have a, a, a solid future here with the Lakers. Eddie Jordan is still out, too, but he started practicing this week for the Lakers. Nixon hits. Speaking of Eddie Jordan, who was hurt the last week of the regular season, they hope to get him back. Well, Maybe they, as early as this week. I talked to Dr. Curl, and they kind of feel that he might see action possibly by next weekend. Three-point effort by Bratz fails, and the Lakers will bring it down with a nine-point lead. We have 15 seconds on the shot clock, 20 seconds for the quarter. Here's a double pick high now. Nixon can go either way. Nixon. Plenty of time. Six seconds. Five. Four. Going for the trap right there. Albeck wants a foul. Let's see what the call is. It is a foul against the Los Angeles Lakers as they put it on Magic Johnson. That's his second. I tell you, we're on the other side of the floor, but that looked like a very solid ball. I thought that he definitely had a piece of that piece of the man, even though you know we're pretty far away here. Gervin on the free throw line. George Gervin is only three out of 13 from the field. He has missed his last five shots in a row. And is off to a very slow start in this game. He has seven points. Make that eight now with the first free throw. And one more to come. Well, let's go back to what we said, though, earlier at the top of the show. Gervin only shoots 37% against the Lakers during the five-game series. First quarter was a tight one, but the Lakers took command in the second period of play. And have raced out to a 10-point lead at 63-53. to 53. Brent Musburger will be along very shortly as Christopher Cross, a face in the crowd here in Los Angeles today. We'll be back shortly. At the conclusion of today's game, and each of our NBA telecasts during the season will be selecting the Miller High Life Most Valuable Player of the Game. In conjunction with this award, Miller High Life will present a check for $1,000 to the Special Olympics organization in the name of the player selected. And Hubie, you and I will be selecting the MVP, and today's winner will be announced at the end of the telecast. Of course, we're talking about the fast break points. LA 17, San Antonio 4 in the first half. How come? Well, I think that the biggest point is the shot selection of San Antonio in that second quarter was extremely poor, plus Los Angeles blocking six shots. That lowered San Antonio's shooting percentage down to 41%. The Lakers are out for 12 fast breaks in the second quarter, convert six. Plus, the key guy, George Gervin, only three for 13 from the field. 
two of the biggest name guys have not done the scoring. Uh, Magic Johnson, for example, has had only one basket. As we look at the first half statistics, the big difference in the shooting percentage. Well, it's there, and also the the bench, which we uh, talked about at the beginning of the game, is kind of a standoff. Uh, McAdoo and Cooper getting 16, and uh, Banks, Corzine, and Bratz getting 13 for San Antonio. The key being the shooting percentage of some people who have become frustrated by the double and triple teaming. Individual scoring, Kareem leads all scores with 19. Mitchell, the leading scorer for San Antonio with 16. There's the shooting percentage by periods. You see the Lakers with a big advantage in the second period. That's the reason they've been able to run up a 10-point lead. Johnny Moore takes the first shot of the second half and makes it good. Well, he's going to have to spot up and do a good job offensively. He must become more aggressive looking for the shot. Uh, because of the fact that the Lakers are double and triple team and everyone who puts the ball on the floor in the lane. Hey! Rabbits had trouble handling it to begin with. Finally got the handle and wound up with his first basket of the game. Well, he's, he's a strong young man who's in there for his boards and his solid defense. Spurs need production out of Gerving. He's just 3 out of 13 in the first half. Overding from outside. Nice touch by 6'9", Mark Overding. That's his fifth basket. Gives him 12 points on the afternoon. Eight-point lead for the Los Angeles Lakers. What they're looking for. They're looking to go into the big fella. They ran a little decoy that time. Nice Magic Johnson's a play. Magic Johnson had just one basket in the first half for the Lakers at a total of four points. Moore off to Mitchell over Memphis. Was it a nice sell? Nixon really overplayed Moore to the right that time. He didn't go for the big fake. Nice pass from Nixon to Wilkes. Short with a slingshot jumper. Oh. And Oberding went up with the elbow and really caught Memphis with a shot. was inadvertent, but I think he did hit a pretty good shot. And look at Stan Albeck. Well, you know, he, he did hit him a shot, but I, I honestly feel from our advantage point that he really didn't even know he was there. All right, here we have Nixon making his move right here. Watch the nice pitch out. Here we're going to have the carom off to the right. Now watch what happens here. Now we're in Chelsea. See, he didn't even know that he was there because Rambis came along on that on that baseline side. Now, is the call the correct call? Well, According to the rule book, the call, yes. I mean, he hit him with an elbow. Whether or not he knew he was there or not, that doesn't make any difference, does it? I, I, I'm pretty sure that you have to say that it has to be a deliberate foul. I mean, if we call all the accidental foul, here we have it right here. You see, he's more concerned about Wilkes going for the steal, and as he stepped back like any normal human being would do if he felt defensive pressure. So, in his case right there, I mean, you really have to defend Overding. He definitely did not try to maliciously injure Kurt Rambis. Rambis, who will make your all-floor burn league every year. The way he plays the game, just a rookie and a free agent. And he scored four points here in the first minute and a half of the second half after going scoreless in the first half of play. Ten-point lead again for the Lakers. I am trying to get Gervin down inside. Moore off to the Iceman. Oberding jump shooting over Wilkes. And if, uh, Mitchell, loose ball foul. Loose ball foul. Mitchell, I believe, right? Now that time, uh, they called it on Kurt Rambis <laughs> over the back. And uh, I thought that one was on Mitchell. Well, you and I had four guys. They could have picked anyone of four that time. <laughs> That's five fouls on Rambis, one left. And here comes another, shall we say, physical player. Well, you know, talking to Pat Riley uh, earlier today, Pat, Pat thought that he would use Lance Berger a lot. Ralph, Ralph. And I'm kind of surprised that this is his first action. Mitchell with a great looping hook shot. Seven baskets for Mitchell at 18 points in the game. Nixon answers for Los Angeles. Well, there are two guys who usually do not play well against San Antonio. Nixon with 15 and McAdoo with 10, who are really hurting the Spurs. Well, forget that today. Mitchell going out for the shot. Lansberger had him on the arm. Lansberger, of course, had a shot at the starting job earlier this year. Hasn't played much. Oh, here we have Mitchell down inside post on here. Lansberger has him with both hands. He had him right there. He's got him on the hip. Now, now in the uh, old days, which was only two years ago, you were allowed to hand check, but they changed the rule. This is the second year. You got to keep your hands off the man.
Stan again. More exciting playoff action coming up this weekend on CBS. Stan Albeck, the name there are rumored for a lot of coaching jobs around the league. Fine job he's done with the Spurs, leading them to a division title the last couple of years. By the way, speaking of coaching jobs, your phone have been ringing at all, uh, Hubie? Life is interesting. What, is, what does that mean? <laughs> Life is interesting. You're going to be with us in San Antonio, all right? We'll be with you in San Antonio. Right. Mike Mitchell on the free throw line. Second a couple for the Spurs. We'll be in San Antonio on Friday night for game three. Baseline bums have called. They want to make you a member of their group. Uh, that was very popular. Yes, uh, Texas it has to feel. And right now, Johnny Moore has got to make a decision. He must get up there and, and start denying the jump shot. He's playing Nixon for the drive, but, and Nixon is just shooting it in his face. Moore with a great move. What a several he has made in this game. That was a little retaliation. Uh, you know, you burned me. I'm going to take you one-on-one -on -one at the other end. Magic Johnson. Oh, yes. Yeah. For the slam. You talk about making passes in traffic. What a, what a, just a beautiful peripheral look by, by Magic Johnson as George Johnson stepped out for the double team. Gervin lost it inside, got it back, and got it out front to George Johnson. Now we have to show that back uh, only because that's one of the very few times we'll see George Johnson that's true. take a shot tonight. Spurs get him down to eight here, and they can't seem to quite get any closer in the second half. Magic looking for help with the shot three clock seconds. down to eight seconds. We get a three-second violation. All right, here we have uh, Magic surveying a situation. Watch, watch George Johnson make the move and see Kareem roll right there. There it is. Big fella made his move as soon as he saw George Johnson go for the double team. Overding. Nice move inside to Mitchell. I tell you, that was a beautiful pass because as Landsberger fought to front Mitchell, Mitchell put his hands up and called for a lob pass, and that's very difficult to do, to make that pass when a defensive man is right up in your face. And I thought that Overding did a, did a really commendable job. Yeah, we talked about the Cleveland connection earlier. Five members of the Spurs, once were members of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Overding with the fadeaway jumper. Still loose. Gervin. Nice great man. pass underneath. Yes, Johnson George. gets it. Oh, give the Iceman credit. So that was great bounce pass in traffic. George Johnson, more noted as the number one shot blocker in the league, has scored now his last two possessions. Inside to Jabbar. This is the first one. Gets the second. And it'll count. And he's fouled. Big catch by Kareem. Big catch because when he when he caught it, George Johnson got a piece of him and the ball. But Kareem did not lose the handle. Caught it with both hands quickly and went up for the dunk. Missed, but then retaliated with the second effort. Three fouls on George Johnson. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 23 points. Five out of six from the free throw line. And you know, Kareem is the all-time scoring leader in playoffs. He's averaged over 30 points coming into the playoffs game. Uh, the playoffs this year averaged over 30 a game covers 101 playoff games 10 years again Johnny Moore with excellent penetration here goes Nixon on a release Johnny Moore caught him I'll tell you these two water bugs they're going to need a rest at the end of this series well it gets interesting in a series of course you get to know everything about a guy everything no secrets oh, yeah. Jabbar again trying to follow and was fouled by Johnson as he went up for the second shot four on Johnson watch watch Kareem swing back this is what he did so well in the Phoenix series look at that drop step move right there came back with the left hand now he has done that twice today both shots he missed but as the series goes on you'll see him make that because he knows he can get that shot Inside to Wilkes, missing with the hook Johnson with the rebound another great 360 move by Moore. Here's the return pass from Gervin and slots it in. Moore, the 6'3 guard from Texas, going up to bang that one in. Well, I, I think we have to get a little bit of credit that time to Mark Landsberger, who also had a piece of that. He's at 14 points, Johnny Moore. That's well over his average, which is nine. Make him go right. Nixon again going one on one with Moore. Getting to be a great matchup. And Nixon comes right back with a bucket of his own that gives him 19 on the afternoon. 
Irving from outside. Maybe he's finally got it going. Let's see. That's only his fourth basket. He's got 10 points. Nixon has oh, it knocked nice. out of his hands. Nice Gervin. block. That's Gervin with the defensive play. Down to Moore. Spurs. Moore with the pull-up jumper. That could have been a big one. Would have gotten him down to within three. It's five right now. Beautiful pass. Jabbar. Yet another basket. Uh, that was a nice pass by Magic. Magic felt in traffic that time. There was an opportunity for a block. Dropped it off to the big fella. And from that close, there are very few people who are going to challenge Kareem when he can elevate. 26 points now for Jabbar. Gervin with the hook. His second straight. Now, the bucket a moment ago was Gervin's first basket since the three-minute mark in the first period. Now he's got two in a row. Well, I'll tell you, that was some shot. I mean, he had his back parallel to the baseline and came out of there with a hook shot off the board. Offensive call caught Kareem that time moving his backside in to pick off the defensive player. Gene Banks comes into the game for the San Antonio Spurs and we got a timeout. Called by Pat Riley, the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers leading the Spurs by five with five and a half minutes left in the third period. And where else but in the NBA playoffs do you see a move like this? Oh, watch this. Now watch him go parallel with his back to the baseline. Most people have difficulty banking that shot in, facing the basket from that area. Never mind with your back to the baseline and then spin it over the top. That could be a key to this game. Gervin having hit his last two baskets after going three for 13 in the first half. Oh, there's a double for George. George with three for three now. He is warming up rapidly. Well, that was a beautiful double screen on the baseline and his defensive man uh, uh, Jamal Wilkes could not get over that dynamite pick oh boy Johnson going in and the goaltending goal. goaltending call that was on the way down but I want to tell you something that was a beautiful hesitation move all right well watch uh, watch as they come off the dribble here watch and see there he sees the opening right there magic there we go for the move on the way down Back to live action. Banks missing a jumper from outside. Magic Johnson grabs the rebound. We've talked about Gervin's problems. That was only Magic's second basket. Well, Magic right now. Oh, yes. It was terrific. I think he shocked both defensive players that time by coming with a little bit of a scoop shot. Magic Johnson is hurting. He has been hurting for about the last five minutes. The injury is either in his arm or in his shoulder. And that's one of the reasons why I think we see him taking nothing but the drive. We were at practice earlier this week. He sat out the practice and had a huge ice pack on his right hand, his shooting hand, but he was back at practice the next day. Whether that's bothering him, I don't know. Well, you gotta give us a clean shot, Adam. 84-77, McAdoo is back in the game. Johnson now has four fouls. McAdoo with the jumper. He got it going in the first half. What I see interesting here is they're trying to get Magic Johnson and Kareem on picks because the Spurs are switching. And every time that George Johnson switches out, they have a guard on Kareem. Foul called on the Los Angeles Lakers and Norm Nixon. That's his third personal foul. Well, that time they caught Nixon smashing into the pick. They thought that the pick was stationed. What a nice move. Gervin, a little double pump move. Couldn't get it to go down. Gene Banks with the rebound. Inside, Mitchell loses it. Here's Nixon leading the break with four. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. by Magic. <laughs> How about Nixon turning on the burners? But a great follow-up by Magic Johnson. And the Spurs will call time. Look at it again. He really turned it off. Watch Magic following. He doesn't give up. He doesn't think that the shot is made. And here he comes right now. The leading rebounder in the L.A. Phoenix series, Magic Johnson, once again does it on the offensive board. And the Lakers have their biggest lead of the game, 11. The Lakers have outscored the Spurs 8 to nothing in the last minute 20 with fast breaks like these. Well, watch the acceleration right here by Norm Nixon into the right. Magic Johnson. Now, as Nixon makes his move here, watch Magic time this. He's allowing himself the opportunity to get the miss. Beautiful timing by Magic. It's the best fast break in basketball, and that's what it's done to San Antonio so far this afternoon. The Lakers outscoring 
The Spurs on fast breaks, 23 to 6. The Lakers are putting maximum pressure here in the backcourt. They've got their biggest lead of the game at 11, 88-77. By the way, be sure and stay tuned for the MVP award at the conclusion of the game. Gervin is fouled as he goes up for the shot. Well, from the real, uh, Cooper got behind him. Now, this is the second time that in the last 30 seconds that George has been able to accelerate right here, right by Cooper, and then Cooper is getting lost. And here's the bump right in the back of the head. He caught George right on the right side of the uh, of the ear and the jaw area. Now you can't let you can't let uh, George start running a string here. He's gotten hot. Oh yeah, he's capable of knocking off eight or nine in a row. Here we have Jamal Wilkes who is having a uh, you know sensational playoffs, continuing right where he left off in the Phoenix series. Irvin now with 16 points in the game. Most of those coming in the second half. Nixon from the top of the circle. That time San Antonio Gamble, Johnny Moore went all the way down on a baseline and double teamed Kareem. The only problem was Nixon rotated right where he wanted to go. Middle of the floor facing the basket 17 feet. That shot puts Nixon over 20 for the third time in the playoffs. He's got 21 and Mike Mitchell answering with that basket for San Antonio. Now he's 22 in this game. 90 to 81. The Lakers controlling. Shot clock down to 10 seconds as they get into the big guy. One on one in the big fella. McAdoo trying to get loose inside to Jabbar. Johnny Moore grabbing the rebound. Magic Johnson almost fell over him. Banks. Gets the J up and gets it down. I'd say that was really a tough shot. Gene Banks made that look easy, but I'd say he made a little 360. Oh, yes, look at that. Yeah, boy. You got to love it. Some pass. Yeah, I'd say the magic man is, uh, is taking everything out of the old repertoire today and laying out sensational assists. 28 points for Jabbar. Magic Johnson isn't scoring, but uh -huh. boy, his floor game is something. All right. right now we have the mud wrestling going on between Banks and, and Cooper. Yes. Norm Nixon has 23 points. And the Lakers are on a roll again. Every time the Spurs get close, they take off. Well, the Spurs right now have got to slow it down, run their power game, get down inside. The Lakers are in, in a, uh, they've already committed foul. So right now, San Antonio is shooting the penalty. Barzine comes into the game. And Stan Albeck getting a little discouraged right now. He's seen his team come closer than been rejected several times. Nixon gets the foul. That is his fourth. And George Johnson will come out as well. Nixon now has 23 points. His playoff high is 26 as Gervin goes to the line. See, Stan Albeck is a little upset at his ball club right now because he's looking for, he's calling out the power game. He wants them to post up. The Lakers are in the penalty. And if, if whenever you're running a streak of non-scoring opportunities, you want to get down inside, so you get fouled, you go to the line, you stop the tempo of the game, you make everybody rest. The most important is you're getting either one or two points by getting on the line. Ice gets them both. Makes it 94-85. Lakers with a minute 40 left in the third period. Magic Johnson looking inside to Kareem. Decides to take it himself. Yes! Well, they're going to make Magic hit the shot. Gervin laid back and fronted Kareem as Corzine was up against him in the back. They're going to make Magic make some perimeter shots here. Gervin okay. on the floor. Oh. <laughs> I mean, is he a human highlight film or is he? Yes, he huh? is. Huh? I'd say they had defense. The defensive man actually got a piece of that ball. You know what I'm impressed with? How easily Gervin is going by Cooper off the dribble. That's the third time he has just absolutely lost it. Gervin, who had only eight at the half, now has 20 points. McAdoo in the corner. Hook pass out to Cooper. Good job by Corzine of blocking out Kareem and then coming down with the board. Johnny Moore on the drive. There he goes to his right. I'm saying you, anytime Johnny Moore comes down the floor, as the coach, you have to say, listen, you must, he must score going to his left because he comes down, he fakes you, and he takes that step into the lane. That's the time left in the third period. 86 89. Spurs getting close again. We have eight seconds on the shot clock. Kareem with the skyhook doesn't go. And Wilkes came over Gervin underneath. 
Well, we've been saying earlier, you know, uh, Jamal Wilkes had four offensive rebounds, three scoring opportunities in the first half, and that time we saw him come from the top of the circle, but it was a definite loose ball foul. So Gervin will go to the free throw line, 86% free throw shooter. The Spurs have had a label of, uh, of choking in the playoffs. Before this year, they were only one in five in their respective playoff series, but uh, they made a lot of believers when they put away Seattle, a team a lot of people thought they'd have a lot tougher time with. Well, the San Antonio Spurs are the second best foul shooting team in this league. They're shooting 78% as a team for the season. Now, right now, we have 24 seconds on the shot clock. We have a 96-91 game. Five-point lead for the Lakers as they bring it down. 15 seconds left in the quarter. And that coincides with the shot clock, so they can use the rest of the period to get the shot away. Cooper. We're going for a double on McAdoo. McAdoo with the fadeaway jumper. That was beautiful execution. It forced San Antonio the switch, and they, if they didn't have it, they could have gone right into Kareem. That's the end of the third period. Lakers leading 98-91. Back with the start of the fourth quarter. After this word from your local station. The NBA on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet. Chevy makes good things happen. Blue Poly, the one-step poly sealant with a two-year guarantee. And by Light Beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Frank Lieber with Hubie Brown. There's the scoring by periods. Right now, the Lakers lead the Spurs by seven. And we've got a game. I mean, we uh, we could have been in Boston today. <laughs> Absolutely. How about that third period? San Antonio comes back with 38. Lakers get 35. But you, you must be impressed with the ability of both ball clubs to knock out 35 to 40 point quarters. You are never safe with two teams like this. Very, very explosive ball club. The number two and number three offensive teams in the National Basketball Association going at it in game one of the best of seven. NBA. Hey, hey, hey. West Double first final. Jamal on the baseline. Hey, hey, hey. Wilkes from outside and Gervin chasing this rebound down. Outlet pass to Johnny Moore. Oh, Corzine was wide open. Moore didn't see him that time. Gervin tried to spin that one off the glass. Moore comes up with this one. Bad pass by the Lakers. Orzine. Banks driving on McAdoo. Say, Banks had that one either way. He could have taken himself to the fingertip, which he did, or drop it off to Corzine. Once again, the Spurs have the lead trimmed down to five. It's usually at this point, at least in the third period, when the Lakers started his spurt. Let's see what happens this time. Well, the Wilkes. second time in a row, they ran Jamal on a baseline double, but he hasn't been open. McAdoo continues to hit. Well, it's nice when someone can bail you out as the shot clock is running down with the defensive man in his face. 16 points for McAdoo. You may have seen the feature we did on him Friday night during the Friday night game. And McAdoo really wants that championship ring more than anything else. He's had all the honors, and now he wants the ring. Mark Overding. Checking in for the Spurs. 193, seven-point advantage for the Los Angeles Lakers. Spurs obviously would like to steal one of these first two games before going home on Friday night. Back to the Hemisphere Arena. Magic Johnson posted up with Gervin. Matchup of two of the great players of our time. Cooper. Here we go. Oberding lost his balance and couldn't find the ball momentarily. That was a good call. That was off McAdoo. He hit it, but he hit it early. Here's the guy that must run a little string here right now. Gervin. Offense. Trying to penetrate and his call for charging. That's one of the very few times that Cooper has been able to guess right. Watch Cooper guess here now. He body bumps him here, but now here's the guess move right there. There's the big move. Good, strong defense by, by Cooper. Second foul on Gervin. Magic Johnson again one-on-one -on -one with Gervin. Wilkes top of the circle, seven-point lead for the Lakers. Well, that time they ran a double screen again. This time it was for McAdoo, the defensive player 
The defensive player just came running right through. Right there. Overding just levels the bottom man on that stack. That's the fourth foul on Overding. Team fouls, four apiece. Here in the final period of play. Here's the double on the left side of the floor. San Antonio switched out and bumped Wilkes so that he was not open. Wilkes. McAdoo sees Cooper on the lane. Well, I tell you something, that was really a tough play by McAdoo. Because McAdoo, it looked like he was going to shoot that one. But here it is right here. Now watch him make his move. And he sees Cooper wide open because the defensive man left him to come down underneath the basket. Changed his mind in midair. Yes, he did. Los Angeles again with a streak, moving out to a 102 to 93 advantage over the Happy Lakers. And the hot action is in Los Angeles at the Forum this afternoon, where the Lakers lead it. They happen to lead by nine, and that's the difference in the bench score. Well, that's because McAdoo is on a roll. McAdoo has hit eight of 12 shots for the game. Gene Banks, high arching jumper. Overton oh, tipped it up once rebound. for Gene with the next one, and we get goaltending. That was a great block by McAdoo. They call it goaltending, a tough ball. But uh, what a manly rebound by Corzine in traffic. Wow. Let me change the statistic here. I said team fouls four apiece. I was looking at my timeout chart. It's four timeouts apiece. Team fouls no problem. We've only had one here in the last quarter. See, right there, San Antonio switching on all, on all pick and roll situations. Beautiful head and shoulder fake by McAdoo. McAdoo with 18 points. And again, a nine-point advantage. Gervin in the third period hit four out of five from the field. Scored 14 points in the third quarter after only eight in the first half. Banks. Nice block by Brewer, his second of the game. McAdoo, traveling call this time, and McAdoo's a little hot about it. Uh, he should be. Uh, you know, he's pumped up right now. He's on a roll. But when he caught that pass, he definitely shuffled his feet before he even thought of putting the ball on the floor. Mitchell back off the bench after getting his rest. Mike Bratz is also in the game. For the San Antonio Spurs. Overding starting to drive on Wilkes. Drops the pass off. Mitchell. Now rebound to the Lakers. Here comes Magic working on another triple-double off to Wilkes. Magic with the rebound. McAdoo. Cooper with the next one. Are they controlling the offensive boards? This is some, some surge here. Yeah, Stan is it. nervous, stands up tight. He has the right to be because he has the number one rebounding team in the league. And they're not doing a good job. Bratz with the steal, down to Gervin and the Iceman. Garzine with the tip. The Iceman forced that one, but there's Garzine. That is the third second shot basket this quarter. And McAdoo gets another one. Coming off the bench, Bob McAdoo has scored 20 points today. There's another bargain for the Lakers who picked him up on Christmas Eve from the New Jersey Nets in a trade which cost them very little. Orzine missing. Cooper with the rebound. Lakers flying down the court on that break. Johnson with the no-look pass to McAdoo. Jamal Wilkes. Orzine comes up with this board. Kicks it down court to Bratz. Seven minutes left to play in the game. Overding drills it. They're never out. You, just, you can never count them out of any ball game. They they can put the markers on up as quick as any team that we have in the league. And Pat Riley wants a timeout for his Los Angeles Lakers, and he gets it with six minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the game. And the Lakers leading the Spurs 106-99. We'll be back shortly. Lakers 106-99. Magic Johnson right now has 15 rebounds. So he has his fourth triple-double in five playoff games. Well, he's just continuing right into this series where he left off at the Phoenix series. And that one he averaged 20 points. But I still think that the, the armor in the hand is really bothering him. Nixon. Wilkes is there with the rebound. 
I tell you, they're killing the Spurs on the offensive boards here. Well, when you tell you that two teams average 15 offensive rebounds a game, that is a lot. And it's kind of surprising, though, that they're doing it to the Spurs. Nixon! Oh. Is he quick? 25 points for Norm Nixon. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, that was a solid timeout by Stan. He can't let it get away from him because there's still six minutes and 19 seconds to go. Look at the acceleration here. Give him one step. Norm Nixon played his college basketball at Duquesne University. Pittsburgh Steelers, once upon a time, thought about making him a defensive back. He is that good an athlete. And welcome back to the Forum in Los Angeles. Hubie Brown and I will be in uh, San Antonio on Friday night for game three of the series. You don't uh, know a good Mexican food place down there, do you? <laughs> there are only four on every corner. <laughs> That's all. Well, you, you think they'll let Stenner and Vernon in town? <laughs> Here we go. Critical right now. They're trying to post up Gervin on Jamal Wilkes low. Gervin trying to penetrate inside. He gets the bucket and is fouled by McAdoo. You know, he's such an effortless shooter. That time as he came across, there are very few guys who can, can, can come into the lane that way and have their lead arm, their shooting arm, right here and make that kind of a shot in traffic after you get hit by two guys. And he was hit front and back that time. Big three-point play. Right now we're back to eight. We have six minutes and five seconds. Plenty of time. Ice has got 25. San Antonio needs some big defensive plays right here. They need some, some, some shot blocking and some steals. They need some help on the board here. On this end of the court. They haven't been getting there. They get this one. Here comes Bratz. 110 to 102. Eight-point lead. Oberding missing. Corzine put it up once. And the next one to McAdoo, and here's the Laker break. Nixon drives the middle, trying to shovel it off to Wilkes. Knocked out of bounds by Bratz. It belongs to Los Angeles. You know, Norm is, uh, you know, he's a little disgusted with himself, but I want to tell you, that, that's okay. The idea was there, the player cutting knew uh, that he was looking for him, and that sometimes that's just as meaningful as, as the score right there, because that guy will run that lane hard again the next time it's there. Wilkes trying to drive the baseline, and we get the foul called over in the corner. Well, that time, over to that time when uh, Jamal went by over thing, right? Uh, we got a technical. We get a technical there, right? Time. You know, Jamal Wilkes did not appreciate being, being hit hard that time by Overding on the baseline, and as he went by him, he Jamal Wilkes popped uh, Overding with the ball, so we had an automatic. Uh, T called that time quickly. It happened right in front of Wally Rooney, and he was right on the call. Overing going down to the free throw now. Now he wouldn't shoot a technical normally, would he? You see that oh, good free throw? Oh. Well, he made it. But regardless, let's take a look at the well, action again. Now watch the crossover move. Right there, he beats him. All right. Now here he is, the, the grip, the grip. Now, here comes the rebound. Now watch Wilkes. Wilkes will eventually get the ball here. And as he's walked, boom, there it is right there. Now, Oberding didn't appreciate that. You know, it's, uh, Wilkes did not appreciate getting that, that, like, the claw move on his move to the basket, especially since he beat him with a nice crossover move. And a foul call before the shot. It's on Corzine. That's three on Corzine. Three Oops. team fouls. Three team fouls. The Lakers have only committed one this quarter. Five minutes, 19 seconds remaining. They're trying to, they're trying to go into Jamal and Kareem. And Wilkes drives the lane. And Corzine picks up foul number four. And the fourth team foul against the San Antonio Spurs. You know, you're in a seven-point game right now, and you still have five minutes to play. The most important thing is that people do not become frustrated and do little picky unish things that are going to destroy your momentum. And right now, we've just seen like a flurry of three negative things which have happened without, you know, without the shot clock moving very far. 17 points for Jamal Wilkes. And the Lakers boost their lead back to nine. Rots on the outside, guarded by Nixon. 
Oh, that was a nice give and go, but the pass was forced by Corzine. Nixon down the floor from 16 feet. Oberding with the rebound. Down court to Bratz. Works it to the top of the circle. Can't get the shot away. Here's a steal by Cooper. Gervin trying to catch him, but he never will. And Cooper goes in for the dunk. Well, that was excellent anticipation by Cooper. He read Bratz's eyes. That was a very tough pass by Bratz, making a cross-court pass in traffic. Gervin, <laughs> hello. Down to Cooper again, who saves it. Nixon to McAdoo. The Spurs are going to have to tighten up on their transition defense after scores. Mitchell. Foul by Cooper. See, when a game gets this type of a pace, you as a coach are, are always concerned. Are your main three guys getting the ball? Are your main three scorers getting the ball where they can get their shots and do the damage of your game plan? What happens a lot of times is when the game gets fast and furious, the wrong people have the ball and they try to force things and nothing happens. You get a bad percentage shot or you get a turnover. And I know that's what Stan Allback is trying to avoid right now. Mitchell has cooled off here in the second half after an outstanding first half in which he scored 16 points. They held him in check pretty well. Lakers 114, Spurs 106. Exactly. Four minutes left to play. Listen, the sensation is the Lakers out of our up eight. Up, up ten. <laughs> that time, they ran Kareem off of a pick up by the foul line. His man was a half a step behind him, opening up that lob. Gervin trying to get it back with the reverse. And he is foul. Watch the alley-oop to Kareem. All right, here it is with Kareem, right here, right now. Now watch the back pick on his man. Right there, Corzine gets a half a step behind him, and there's the lob. Yes, indeed. 30 points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. As outstanding camera work by our director and his, and his staff. Tony Verna at his best. George Gervin hits two. He paid to say that? Yep. <laughs> Got another free dinner, didn't you? No, the Heineken's keep rolling in. <laughs> <laughs> McAdoo outside to Nixon. Oh, they're trying to get Kareem right here now, posted up by Corzine. Corzine plays him pretty well defensively. That's been the history. Well, the matchup between the two, two shot clock, two seconds, and Johnson just desperation shot with one second left on the shot clock. Gervin, nice fake yes. to get Nixon out of position, and he gets the two points. Well, Keep checking it. Oh, look at that. Kareem leading the fast break. Well, gets his 32nd before point. Before the game, Pat Riley said that on every score they, by the opposition, they were going to send Kareem and not have him take the ball out of bounds. Let's see if it's a clean block or a foul on McAdoo. McAdoo took the ball and bounced it almost up into the oh, Here we have it right here now. There's your strong move. McAdoo is right under the ball with his forehand. But the, the referee has McAdoo hitting with his left hand. And also, I'm pretty sure they just hit a technical foul on McAdoo for slamming the ball to the floor. It almost did a, uh, a sponge paint job on the roof of the forum. <laughs> we got pretty good height on that pass, yes, I think. <laughs> Gervin on the line, following the technical on McAdoo. All right, here we have it right here. There's your, there's your score. Now watch them jump out of bounds. And there's Magic looking for Kareem at the other end of the floor. Now, this is something which I know that... San Antonio has not been expecting because that's the third time that Kareem has beaten his man down the floor today. I've got Gervin, 14 out of 15 from the free throw line. He's been there a lot. We have 2.52 to go in this ball game, and we have a six-point difference. Five. Now it gets interesting. 118, 113. The pressure on the Lakers. Two minutes, 45 seconds to go. They've been ahead throughout the second half. Both teams are in the penalty on the next foul now. 
So fouling is going to be critical from here on down. McAdoo oh, starting to drive yes. the baseline on Mitchell. You know what? Mitchell grabbed him before he put the ball down on the floor that time. There's the grab right there. So McAdoo will go to the free throw line for the first time. He's got 20 points coming off the bench. All from the field. McAdoo is a 71% foul shooter for the season. One more point here would tie his uh, career high or playoff high with the Los Angeles Lakers. He once scored 50 in a playoff game. All right, we have 2.30 two to go. Six-point spread. Johnny Moore trying to take it down. Drives the baseline. Yeah! Great pass to Overton. Yeah, Overton can't yeah, yeah. run it down. It belongs to the Lakers. Well, that time, the, the Lakers really rotated beautifully defensively. Everybody was right there, and they had the big fella to put the pressure on the shot by Mark. Hey, Stan Elbeck is really going through some motion. It's a breakdown of defense, breakdown of defensive rotation. Coaching staff very perturbed over there, and they have a right to be. No way can a player put the ball on the floor and dribble 12 feet to the hole. Only 12 points for Magic Johnson, but he still played a great game. Timeout. Well, to paraphrase, uh, one of those commercials uh, you see all the time doesn't get much better than this, does it? No, it sure doesn't. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing here this evening is Gervin is having a tough time with a shooting percentage, but... You know, Frank just brought out a great stat to me. He's 14 out of 16 on the line. 34 points. Four gets it inside to Corzine. That's, of course, what the Spurs need. Once again, Moore beats his man, gets a shoulder ahead of him, and Kareem had to come out and put the trap on him, but it opened up Corzine. Kareem has got 32 points of the game so far. They're clearing out the side for Kareem. Kareem takes the sky hook. 17-footer that time. Over the back. McAdoo over the back. That is six fouls on Bob McAdoo. Uh, he he fouls really on get the a hand. hand. Listen to the hand for McAdoo. <laughs> Mitchell will go to the free throw line. He's at six out of nine from the line, has a total of 20 points, 22 points. All of his scoring figures improved, actually, when he came over from Cleveland to San Antonio, despite the fact that he was their main scorer. And, of course, San Antonio is paired with Durbin. Those are a couple of big misses, Hubie. Well, they're big because they had a, an excellent opportunity to get it down to four. Six-point lead for the Lakers with a minute 25. Nixon jacks it up. Porzee finally comes down with it, puts it on the floor for the Spurs. To Johnny Moore. Moore trying to drive the lane, hands it to Magic Johnson. What a great defensive play. Here's Kareem doing a dance on the sidelines. Where are the Spurs? Where's the transition defense? Big play. Nixon gets the bucket and you saw Kareem had all day there was nobody back at all and one of the uh, Spurs Johnny Moore is down on the floor injured here's the play again as Nixon goes in for the layup Moore is hurt on the other end of the court and is being attended to rather quickly by John Anderson the trainer timeout here in Los Angeles back in a moment There's the story, a minute five left, 123-115. San Antonio had, had nobody back. I mean, Kareem was tiptoeing on the sidelines. Seems to be the Spurs had time to get people back. Well, they definitely had time because they had two fellas in position, one on the left wing, one on the right wing. Uh, the, the, the steal by Nixon happened in the lane. The penetration was there. There were two guys back, but you know what they did? They gave up. On the long pass, they saw Kareem going down there. They said, ah, oh, this is going to be a, a definite dunk. All right. Here's the steal again. Take a look at it. And Johnny Moore was now injured watch. on this Here play. Here it is right there. Because off to the other side. Here comes the long pass. All right. Now, instead of running back right here, everyone had an opportunity. Nixon beats 
naturally he beats his man because Johnny Moore is down. He's injured. But where was the defensive rotation and the transition move by the other four people? Spurs are out of timeouts. Los Angeles still have three left. And Moore, by the way, came out of the game and walked off the court. Now they're trying There's to get no a three-point opportunity for Bratz. Gervin with the three-point effort. Air ball. Mitchell underneath. Well, that was good. That was smart. You got to have the score as quick as you can. Less than a minute left to play in the game. 123-117. Six-point lead for the Los Angeles Lakers. Playing a little keep away. Using the clock. Stan Albeck yelling double it. Yes, there it is. Brutz. This is big. They must score now. Brutz on the drive. Misses. And Magic Johnson comes up with the rebound. And Nixon going to take his time here. Game clock down to 30 seconds. Shot clock at 15. And Magic Johnson doing his dance. And he draws the foul. That's a big miss by Brutz. A uh, very big miss. It looked like he was, he wanted to really pass that. And he found himself that he had to shoot. And then he tried to get in a situation whereby he was going to get fouled. And Riley, who is still batting 1,000 as a playoff coach, he'll be 5 for 5 after today. The next game will be here in Los Angeles at the Forum on Tuesday night, game two of this series. Magic rebound, or Magic Johnson, yeah, you might as well call him Magic rebound. 15 rebounds, 12 assists, 13 points. Another triple-double for the Magic Man. His fourth in five playoff games, and uh, we can tell you that our executive producer of the NBA on CBS is Jim Harrington, the shepherd here in Los Angeles, who tends his flock, is Robert D. Stenner. <laughs> and among the flock is our resident genius, Tony Verna, our director. Good to have Bob Dunphy and Rich Nelson and Peter Bright with us today at the Forum. That'll well, have been a great opening game. I mean, we have seen a few things happen today. Spectacular play on both sides. Gervin with a slow first half, coming back. Hey, the Lakers just played the three-point shooters really well. On that long pass down, as Corzine caught it, the Lakers sprinted and covered all three guys who <laughs> spotted up for the three-point shot. Fagley has come into the game. He can shoot that three-pointer on occasion, but it's all over for all intents and purposes. Bratz fouling Nixon. How about Nixon? He's had a day. Wow. Well, the bonus in today's game was the ability of Nixon and McAdoo to explode point-wise, which they were not able to do in the previous five-game series during the course of the year.